If you guys are looking for some extreme budget dinner options, today is going to be a great video for you. I'm going to be sharing five dinners for just $25 that can feed your family of four this week. Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. Today I am doing an extreme budget challenge where I am making five dinners, feeding my family of four for just $25. This is definitely not a new concept on YouTube. There are tons of these videos out there, so you have probably seen some, but I wanted to share my take on it. So I've planned out my meals. I have researched where I can get the cheapest ingredients, and the meals that I'm planning to make this week are a lemon chicken with rice and peas. I'm also going to be making some creamy chicken enchiladas with refried beans, a Cajun beans and rice dish, a cheesy chicken broccoli bake with salad on the side and some grilled chicken with twice baked potatoes. For my take on this challenge, I am not calculating partial ingredients and what I mean by that is that I have $25 in cash and I am using this to buy all of the ingredients for all five meals with the exception of basic spices that I have at home, salt, pepper, other things in my spice cabinet as well as a little bit of butter and oil. One thing I would say is that if you are looking for really cheap spices, definitely check out either Walmart or the Dollar Tree. You can definitely build up a great spice cabinet with the ingredients there and if you're looking for a list of spices that are sort of essential to your pantry I actually have a list of those in my cookbook which I'll link down below okay so a couple things I want to talk about before we get started with the shopping and the cooking first of all today's video is in collaboration with Abby over at the simplified saver if you guys are not familiar with her channel I would totally recommend it I love watching her videos she is a fellow working mom that does YouTube and she does does tons of home and food and family content. She has great videos on budget cooking and if you like my channel I'm pretty sure that you will like hers so make sure that you go and check her out. Give her a subscribe if you're not familiar with her tell her that I sent you. She's also going to be doing her take on some budget dinners today so I'll have her video linked down below make sure that you watch that after you're done with mine. Another thing I want to bring up is a resource that I developed for today's video and that is an exciting Excel sheet that basically is going to give you the space to plan out your meals, your ingredients, and the cost of those to ensure that you don't go over $25. So all of this is pre-formatted in the Excel sheet. I'll have a link down below where you can download this document, but this is what I'm going to be working off of today. The sheet is going to already be populated with the ingredients and meals that I am planning, but obviously you can delete those and add your own. The next thing I want to bring up just in the context of budget shopping and extreme budget meals and that sort of subject is that if you are struggling to feed yourself or feed your family definitely check out the resources in your area there is so much help available out there and honestly no one should go hungry or struggle to feed their family so if you are struggling please please reach out to your food banks your local police department can also help you in terms of what resources are out there if you have young kids check out WIC. There's absolutely no shame in needing help at all. Um, I just wanted to do this video so that I could show you guys some pretty what I think are innovative and really delicious meals for not a lot of money. I've definitely been in the position before where I struggled to afford groceries. Uh, when I was in college I put myself through school making eight dollars and 25 cents an hour and honestly in hindsight I cannot believe that I didn't apply for food assistance because I definitely would have qualified for it. Um, I definitely bounced plenty of checks uh, buying my groceries for the week and I used to be able to um, be super thrifty and honestly I could um, like tally up all of the food in my grocery cart um, and estimate what the cost would be within a couple dollars because I had to, right? I didn't have that much money to um, play with in terms of what I could buy at the store. So I am no stranger to budget shopping but definitely Definitely reach out for help if you need it and if any of you guys that are watching are aware of national resources or anything like that please drop them in the comments below so others can see them as well in addition my charity for the month of July is going to be feeding America
America. So all of the revenue that this video generates for the month of July, I will be donating to Feeding America, which is a nonprofit that helps provide access for food to those who are struggling. So definitely share this video with other folks if you think that they would be able to get something out of it. And you can follow me over on Instagram at Jen Chapin. I'll be updating at the end of the month how much I was able to donate. So thank you as always for your support on my channel. Um, your support allows me to be able to um, donate to charities that I think are important. So I appreciate you. So now without further ado, let's go into Walmart and grab some of our ingredients. Then we're going to go to Aldi and I think Hy-Vee for one thing. When I get home, I'll share with you all of the ingredients, the cost of those, and then we'll get into the meals. So one thing I found really interesting actually is that Walmart beat Aldi in terms of cheaper ingredients for the most part. So that's why I'm starting out here at Walmart. You can see I have the prices for these items right here. So I'm gonna cross reference those um, in the store. And you can see here my total is $24.77 with 23 cents <laughs> left to spare. So hopefully um, I can stay on track with that amount. All right, so in order to get some veggies this week, we're gonna grab one of these salad bags from Walmart, they're 92 cents. So for cheese, I priced it at both Aldi and Walmart. And if you're looking for a one pound block of cheese, it's actually cheaper to get it here at Walmart. But if you're looking for the eight ounce blocks, it's cheaper to get it at Aldi. So we're actually gonna get our chicken breast at Aldi today because they have it on sale for $1.69 a pound. However, if you just have a Walmart, I would recommend this three pound bag of chicken breast. It comes out to $2.16 per pound. Um, so if they didn't have it on sale at Aldi today, this is probably what I would be purchasing. So I wanted to bring up the spices really quick while I'm here. You can get the larger bottles like this at um, the Dollar Tree for a dollar. They're 98 cents here at Walmart, so they're actually a little, a little bit cheaper. But if you want a smaller container of spices, these are actually 86 cents. Um, so definitely if you're trying to build your spice cabinet, check out Walmart. I do think it's the better option. We are gonna grab one can of cream of chicken soup and this is cheaper at Walmart. So these flour tortillas at Walmart actually beat the Aldi price. They're $1.48 for 12. All right, so of course we're gonna grab some rice and beans. This is the cheapest in terms of rice at Walmart. It's 70 cents. And then we're gonna grab a bag of pinto beans for a dollar. So we are gonna get two lemons, which comes out to a dollar eight but we are gonna try and extract the most flavor that we can from these. Okay, so we are done at Walmart. Um, I did have, uh, I think, well, just one modification of the ingredients, which I'll let you know <laughs> when I get home. Uh, but at Walmart, I spent a total of $15.48. So that means I have $9 and 52 cents left to spend at Aldi. So the things that I need to get here are chicken breast, sour cream, and pepper jack. So I know the price on the sour cream and the pepper jack, and that will determine how much I have left to spend on the chicken breast. So we're gonna go in there and grab that stuff, and then once we get home, I'll show you everything that I got. All right, so I'm actually gonna save a little bit of money on the pepper jack, because on the website it says it would, it said it was $1.89, but in store it's actually $1.69. All right, so I just wanna mention quickly that one of our dinners this week is going to include a side salad. Now I am assuming that everyone has at least one <laughs> partial bottle of dressing in their refrigerator. However, if you don't, Aldi is a great place to come for salad dressing. It's 89 cents and you can even pick up some croutons for 89 cents as well. All right guys, so here is everything that I got and I want to say that I kind of failed. Well, not really. Okay. I did go over my $25 by 60 cents, but I'm going to show you where I went wrong and how you can actually remedy that if you want to um, replicate this. So on the cheese situation, I did tell you guys that it was cheaper to get the one pound block at Walmart. However, when I priced it, when I went to Aldi, it actually would have been cheaper for me to get two of the eight ounce blocks at Aldi. So I spent an extra 10 cents on the cheese that I didn't actually have to, um, but anyway. So for this one pound block of cheddar, I paid $3.48 
For the eight ounces of pepper jack, I paid $1.69. These are gonna be for a variety of meals throughout this week. That's another thing that I wanna to mention too, is if you're trying to create multiple meals on the same budget, figure out things that you can use and buy um, or that you can buy and then use them across multiple meals. That's gonna save you money in the end. So on this ham steak, I ended up getting this at Walmart. Now I was originally going to go to Hy-Vee and go to the meat counter and buy a quarter pound of bacon because that's what I could fit in my budget. Then I could use the bacon for the rice and beans. I could also use it for the baked potatoes and then I could also use the bacon grease for the refried beans. However, I actually decided that I was gonna get more out of the ham because I could get this eight ounce package of ham steak, which is a half a pound of ham, from Walmart for $1.98, which I thought was a pretty good price. So I'll be using this in the twice baked potatoes. I'll probably use a little bit of it in the refried beans just for, just kind of for that like, um, you know, salty flavor. Um, usually I make my refried beans with a little bit of bacon grease, which is pretty traditional, but we're gonna modify it in this instance. And then we're also gonna use some of the ham in the rice and beans as well. Now, originally I would use like andouille or beef smoked sausage with my rice and bean recipe. However, it was too expensive and I couldn't fit it in the budget. So definitely as you are, you know, looking at ingredients and if you are on a strict budget like this, definitely look for things that you can get a lot of flavor out of for little money. Okay. Here's the chicken. So this is actually kind of what I ended up going over on. So I had a little less than $7 left once I had my pepper jack and my sour cream at Aldi. However, this was the cheapest pack of chicken that I can find. So I ended up spending the $7.54 on it. So technically that's kind of what put me over <laughs> my 60 cents for my $25, but that's okay. The chicken was a little bit picked over, so I feel like if I would have went there either yesterday or maybe earlier today or earlier in the week even, that I could have found a smaller pack of chicken. However, this is a really great price. I also looked at the bone-in chicken breast. The thing is, is when you buy the bone-in chicken breast, you may be paying less per pound. However, you're gonna discard some of it, like you're paying for the bone and the skin. Um, in that price, whereas this is basically all usable chicken. So this is about four pounds of chicken. We're actually going to end up getting like four meals out of this, which is perfect. I really kind of wanted to do a little bit more diverse meals and do like some ground beef and ground chicken, but with limitations on the budget, we're just gonna use chicken for all of them. Okay, so sour cream, I had priced this at 99 cents at Aldi online. However, when I went into the store, it ended up being 89 cents, so that was a win for me. I ended up getting two lemons at Walmart. Now these are going to be used for a variety of recipes and we're really going to get all that we can out of these lemons. We're going to use both the zest and the juice. These two lemons were a dollar and eight cents. Okay, rice obviously is something that we all know is very inexpensive, very filling. You can use it in a ton of different ways. This was the cheapest rice that I could find at Walmart. It was 70 cents for a 16 ounce package. For the pinto beans, this is obviously also something that's super inexpensive. It is cheaper to buy dried beans than canned beans. However, canned beans are still really, you know, price effective. Um, however, we're gonna get a lot of like filling carbs and nutrients out of this one pound of pinto beans. So this is gonna be for the refried beans and then it will also be for the um, rice and beans as well. So that's one pound of pintos and this was a dollar. Okay, potatoes. So I did not have enough in my budget to buy four potatoes, which is what I would have needed if I was making baked potatoes. So what I decided to do was just buy two potatoes and then I'm going to use some of the shredded cheese and sour cream to make twice baked potatoes as well as some of the chopped ham. So th these two potatoes were a dollar and five cents. Um, I thought that was pretty good, honestly, for two um, pretty large sized potatoes. Okay, so now the onion was another thing where I misstepped. <laughs> so if I would have been on a very strict budget, um, I probably would have gone back and got my money back because I did end up paying 25 cents more for this onion than I should have. When I looked at my receipt when I got out to the car, they actually charged me for the wrong onion. So I purchased a yellow onion, they rang it up as a Vidalia onion. 
So I ended up paying 99 cents for this onion where I should have only paid 74 cents for it. So that's a way that I could make up some of that 60 cents <laughs> that I went over. Uh, but anyway, I got one onion and we'll use this for multiple recipes throughout the week. I also got a can of cream of chicken soup. This is going to be for the chicken, rice, and broccoli casserole. The best place to get it is at Walmart. It's 50 cents a can for the generic. I also decided to get some garlic because that's going to give us a lot of flavor in our meals for not a lot of money. I got one head of garlic at Walmart and that was 56 cents. The enchilada recipe actually calls for a can of green chilies, but that is 76 cents and I did not have enough left in my budget for that. So I decided to substitute a jalapeno and I got this for 13 cents at Walmart. Okay, flour tortillas. These are actually cheaper at Walmart as well. Um, you can get 12 of these Chi Chi's flour tortillas for $1.48. And honestly, even when I'm not doing extreme budget shopping, I buy these all the time and they're delicious. I would definitely recommend them. It's really difficult, honestly, when you're shopping on this strict of a budget for four people to really integrate a veggie side into each meal. However, I did try my best. So I did get some broccoli cuts. These are a really good deal at Walmart. They sell for 84 cents. Now the broccoli cuts are cheaper than the broccoli florets. The broccoli florets are $1. So if you have the extra couple cents, you can spring for that. But this is what fit in my budget. So we're gonna use this for the chicken, rice, and broccoli casserole. Um, I kind of told you guys about the salad. I did decide to spend the 92 cents on a bag of salad because I thought that would be um, a good side to go with the chicken, broccoli, rice bake. Now, again, I'm assuming that everyone has like at least a partial bottle of dressing in their fridge. Technically, I guess people can say that I'm cheating with this challenge. If you wanna leave that out and just do the chicken, broccoli, rice casserole, it's gonna be plenty filling. I just thought I would give an option for a green on the side. So this is actually another thing that's cheaper at Walmart than it is at Aldi. So just to keep that in mind. And then some peas. So this is another thing that I decided to spend money on because I wanted a veggie on the side of the lemon, chicken, and rice. So I did go ahead and spend 77 cents on this bag of peas. Um, I think that's a pretty, honestly, it's a pretty decent deal. It's cheaper than buying two cans of peas and it's also cheaper than green beans. So if you're looking for green veggies, there are definitely some options. Um, again, all of this food I got for $25.60 with the caveats that um, I overspent a little bit on the cheese and the onion got rang up at the wrong price. Overall, around $25 for five meals that are gonna feed four people. Um, I think also we'll probably have some leftovers too, especially with the beans and rice, so we'll see. Um, let's get to cooking and I'll show you these meals. All right, so we're definitely gonna have to do some prep work for these meals. So the first thing that I'm going to do is cook my pinto beans. I'm actually going to cook them in the Instant Pot because it does not require soaking. So you can find this recipe on a pinchofhealthy.com, but all you need is a pound of dry pinto beans, five and a half cups of water, and then seasoning. So I normally keep a couple of different like bouillon options in my spice cabinet and I would encourage you to do the same because it honestly stretches really far and it's a really inexpensive way to add flavor to like rice and beans and different things like that. So the first example I have is this Knorr um, beef flavor bouillon. This is actually a powder that you can make um, beef broth out of. And then I also have this better than bouillon. This one is actually a vegetarian chicken base. However, I have a veggie one. Well, I think I have a veggie and a chicken one in the fridge right now. So that's what I'm going to use to flavor my beans. Now, obviously, if you don't have this, you can spend a couple extra dollars to get that, or you can just use the spices you have in your spice cabinet. I would say salt, pepper, um, garlic powder would be really good in beans, obviously. So that's what I'm going to use to flavor my water. So I mentioned earlier my cookbook, and if you're not familiar with that, it's the Essential Pantry Cookbook. And basically this cookbook does give you a list of pantry staples that I feel like everyone should have on hand. So let me know if you'd be interested in a separate video. I can probably do like a budget um, stock your pantry video. I think, like I said, it's really beneficial for people who are maybe in college or just starting out. But I do have sort of a list of spices that I would recommend um, in terms of everybody having on hand. So that is salt, pepper, chili powder, dried dill, Italian seasoning, garam masala can um, flavor Indian dishes, 
cumin, cayenne pepper, turmeric, and paprika. So those are the ones that I um, recommend. Obviously, in this book, I also included um, either vegetable or chicken stock, but again, you can also keep things like that in your spice cabinet. If you've never cooked with dried beans before, always make sure that you rinse them because they can have sand and dirt on them. And then also sometimes you'll find that like little pieces of like pebbles or you'll find beans that are like discolored and may not be the greatest so those you kind of want to pick out so if you ever are looking at like a recipe or like an older cookbook or something and it says rinse and sort your beans this is what sorting your beans means <laughs> so it means just pick out the parts that are um, yucky or the rocks and then we'll just use the rest all right so i've got my beans in my pressure cooker i'm going to add my five and a half cups of water so this is what that vegetable base looks like or you know vegetable broth again if you don't have this don't you know don't worry about buying it if it's something that you really don't have in your budget however you can get that nor like chicken uh, bouillon powder i think you can get that for like less than two dollars at walmart um, you may be able to get it at dollar tree too so definitely check that out i would um, recommend purchasing that if it's something that you have in your budget because i do think it gives a lot of flavor to things okay so i've mixed this up i'm not going to add any salt to this because the recipe said that it was salty enough just with the broth so i'm setting this on high pressure for 45 minutes the next thing that we're going to do is go ahead and cook our rice for the week so in my cookbook i do have a recipe for baked brown rice however i did purchase white because it was cheaper so we're just going to measure this out and see how many cups we have in here um, the recipe that i have calls for two cups so i just kind of want to see how much we have looks like we have about two cups so this is actually going to make around five cups of rice, maybe a little bit more, um, which we'll use with the lemon chicken recipe and also in the um, chicken and rice casserole. Now, brown rice does take longer to cook. So the recipe that I have for brown rice takes about an hour to bake. This is white rice, so we're probably going to do it for, I don't know, maybe like 25 um, to 30 minutes should be good. All right, so I've got a couple tablespoons of butter in this baking dish here with my rice. Now, the recipe does call for this. However, it is definitely optional. You can add a drizzle of oil if you have that, or if you don't, you can just leave it out. It's not going to affect how the rice comes out. It's just going to affect, obviously, the flavor of it. So I'm boiling the water right now. Then we're going to pour in three and a third cups of boiling water, and we'll cover this with foil and bake it. So I went ahead and boiled my water, so I'm going to pour that in. And I try to kind of pour it over the butter <laughs> so the butter will melt a little bit. And then I just kind of distribute or try to distribute everything evenly in an even layer. Um, if you have a Dutch oven, I, I've never tried it, but I assume you could do this recipe in a Dutch oven too. Um, just anything that's oven safe and has a tight fitting lid, just because I'm doing it in a 9 by 13, I'm going to use foil. All right, so I've got my rice in there. I've also washed my potatoes and dried them and I pricked them a few times with a fork. Yes, in my experience, you do need to prick the potatoes because I have had a baked potato explode in the oven before when I did not pierce the skin. So I'm gonna go ahead and kind of kill two birds with one stone and bake these potatoes while the rice is baking. Those will probably take about an hour. All right, so the next thing that we wanna do is be a little bit strategic about how we're gonna divide up this chicken. So I need this to stretch for four meals. Um, two of the meals, I'm actually going to cook the chicken breast as is. So one is gonna be the lemon chicken with rice, and then the other one will just be like some grilled chicken cutlets. And then the other two recipes are the chicken enchiladas and the casserole. So for those, I need like cooked shredded chicken. So I'm thinking what I'll do is use maybe two chicken breasts for two of the meals that I'm gonna need shredded chicken for, and then the others, I'll use these three chicken breasts.
Okay, so here's what I came up with. So in this dish here, I have four thin um, chicken breast cutlets, and this is gonna be for the grilled chicken that's gonna go with the twice baked potatoes. On this plate, I have chicken strips, um, basically two per person, so eight chicken strips. This is what is going to be used for the lemon chicken. And then on this plate here, I saved all of the scraps, and then I basically have one large chicken breast with about two thirds of another one. And this is all gonna be cooked in the instant pot for shredded chicken that's going to go with the enchiladas and the casserole. So hopefully this uh, all <laughs> works out, but you know, basically four meals out of that pack of chicken, I think it's pretty good. Okay, so for the chicken that we're going to basically grill or saute, however you wanna do it, um, I am going to season this because that is what we're gonna have for dinner tonight. So. I am gonna drizzle this with just a little bit of olive oil. You can use whatever oil you have on hand. Olive, canola, vegetable. Canola oil is definitely um, more inexpensive. Um, and honestly, that is what I used often when I didn't have enough money to buy olive oil. I think that it worked just, worked just fine. Okay, and then I'm gonna add some pepper. And then I like to add garlic powder. So I think, honestly, I think garlic powder, salt, and pepper is a really good combination for flavoring, um, regardless of what you're making. I kind of want to add lemon juice to this, but I'm worried I'm not going to have enough for the other recipes, so I'm going to hold off. I'm just going to add a little bit of thyme, and I think that will be good. Okay, so we're gonna turn this over and season the other side. And the longer you can let this sit in the refrigerator, the more flavorful it will be. Um, I'm probably just gonna let it sit for maybe 30 minutes to an hour, but you could let it go for a day if you wanted to. I think sometimes, you know, as I was talking about the olive oil versus the canola oil thing, I think the food landscape and the nutrition landscape out there, especially not just on YouTube, but elsewhere, has just become so elitist, you know, in terms of like, well, you need to buy, you know, fair trade this and non-GMO this and organic this. And it's like, that, it's, it is kind of an elitist way of thinking, right? Because that stuff you pay a premium for and not everyone can um, afford that. And so, you know, shaming people about whether or not they buy organic is really like <laughs> counterproductive. Um, yeah, so anyway, here's my chicken. I'm gonna cover this and put it in the fridge. So I'm gonna go ahead and chop my onion up. Now that I'm looking at my recipes, I probably could have been a little bit more strategic about my onion purchasing. Um, I probably could have gone with a smaller onion, but that's okay. We'll, we will make everything work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make the shredded chicken for both the enchiladas and the um, chicken rice casserole. So we're gonna make that in the instant pot. I will link this chicken enchilada recipe down below. It is one that my sister has made a lot and it is so good. I've never actually made it before, um, but I've eaten it lots of times when she's made it. So <laughs> that's what we're gonna make. And this was kind of the recipe that I started planning everything around. And I thought, okay, well, if I'm gonna make these and I know I'm gonna make these, then I'm gonna plan everything around you know, chicken dishes. Um, that way I can save money and not have to purchase you know, multiple proteins and meats. I apologize for my ridiculous chopping job, but I'm using this flexible <laughs> cutting board that's like sliding all over the place. Okay, that's okay. Bobby Filet's not here measuring my onion dice, making sure that all the pieces are uniform. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I have quite a bit of chopped onion here. I'm gonna save half of this for the rice and beans because I do need onion for that recipe. And then I think with the other half, I'm gonna use it in the broth that we're gonna cook the chicken in for the enchiladas and the casserole. All right, so in my Instant Pot, I have this on saute and I had four tablespoons of butter in there. Again, if you don't have butter on hand, do not fret, just use oil. Whatever oil you have on hand will work fine. You just need some type of you know, fat, either oil or butter in there to um, saute the onion. And then also we're gonna kind of make a, a roux out of this for the enchilada sauce. Okay, and while that is sauteing, I'm also going to cut up my jalapeno. Now again, if you wanna make this recipe the proper way, you can get a can of diced 
green chilies. I did not have it in my budget, so I think this is gonna work just fine. Basically, I mean, we just need a little bit of spice in the enchilada sauce. So I'm gonna add a quarter cup of flour to this. I'm gonna go ahead and consider the flour a pantry staple. You do need that to thicken the sauce. Then I'm just gonna cook this for a few minutes just to get that raw taste out of the flour. And then we'll add our liquid. Okay, so in this measuring cup here, I have four cups of liquid. It's two cups of water and then two cups of like whatever chicken broth or bouillon that you have on hand. You can use the better than bouillon or you can use the bouillon powder. Or again, if you don't have broth on hand, just use water and add extra seasoning spices. All right, so we're gonna add our chicken. Again, this is chicken breast and scraps that I trimmed off of the chicken when I cut it up. So I'm gonna turn off the saute, put the lid on, and then we're gonna cook this on high for eight minutes, and then we'll take the chicken out and shred it. All right, so our baked rice is done. I had this in the oven for, uh, I think I put it in for 28 minutes at 375. So now the key to this is to fluff it with a fork and then you wanna let it sit uncovered for about five minutes because this is uh, what's gonna help it not stick together. If you cover it back up, the liquid is gonna seep back into the rice and you're gonna end up with mushy rice. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is shred our cheese. So for all of these recipes, the cheese needs to be shredded. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that all at once. By and large, it is cheaper to buy, you know, a block of cheese and shred it yourself rather than buy pre-shredded and it also melts better. I'm gonna do this in my food processor because I have one, but if you don't have one, totally just shred it on a box grater it's not a big deal but if you do have a food processor it's very convenient because it is super quick okay so here is the cheese that i got out of those two blocks of cheese so i'm going to need some shredded cheddar for the broccoli chicken rice casserole and then i'm also going to need some of it for the twice baked potatoes and then some of it for the enchiladas so I'm probably gonna end up using a little bit less cheese than some of the recipes call for just because I wanna make it stretch. But I wanna talk about cheese for just a second because I know that you know, when you think of like budget-friendly ingredients, you might not think of cheese as being one of them. However, I do wanna say that cheese does have a decent amount of protein in it. It has about seven to eight grams of protein uh, per ounce, depending on the cheese. So not only can it help with flavoring your food, it also can help with satiety because it does have that protein in it and also it has fat in it. So when you eat something that has, you know, fat in it, like a higher, not necessarily a higher fat content, but has fat in it in terms of macros, you're gonna feel full faster and I think that's important, especially if you're trying to do budget meals and you're trying to make your meals stretch. So pepper jack, shredded cheddar, uh, let's move on to the rest. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is portion out my rice. So I need this to stretch for two meals. I'm going to take two and a half cups of rice out and set it aside. That's gonna be for the casserole. And then whatever remainder we have is going to be for the lemon chicken. So this is the rice that I measured out for the casserole. It doesn't look like a whole lot, but we're gonna mix this with shredded chicken and like a whole bag of broccoli, so it'll be fine. And then this is the remainder that I had in this container right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in the fridge. And then when we make the lemon chicken, this will go with that dinner. Um, rice reheats really easily in the microwave like all you have to do is dump this into a bowl maybe add a few teaspoons of water just to make sure it doesn't dry out cover it up and heat it up for a couple minutes and you can also freeze rice also um, it freezes really well if you want to make a big batch ahead of time okay so my beans are done but the recipe says to do a natural pressure release basically until there's no pressure left in the pot um, this is not an instant pot so it doesn't really have like the valve that I can see, but I just tried a little bit and there's still <laughs> there's still pressure in there. So we're gonna let that go, let it sit, I mean. Um, but the chicken is also done and that one we can do a quick release on. So you can see here like with the Instant Pot, um, 
you know, the red valve is up, that means there's still pressure in it. Make sure that when you let the pressure go, um, you don't have it under your cabinet because it will um, take the finish off your cabinet. Ask me how I know. I also wanted to mention too, if you do not have an Instant Pot and you want to make these recipes, you totally can. Um, this particular recipe for the chicken, I would just simmer it on the stove probably for about 20 minutes. Um, for the beans, you can definitely find a recipe to make those on the stove top as well. I just want to say that, you know, things don't always come out like we like them to. Case in point, you could let your Instant Pot release and spew enchilada sauce all over your kitchen and all over your other Instant Pot. It's fine. It happens to the best of us. You know, if, if this does happen, you can kind of drape a paper towel over there to um, <laughs> kind of try to sop up some of the liquid. Um, it's, yeah, I'm going to let this sit before I try to release the rest. All right, so that was a debacle. Okay, here's the cooked chicken. I'm gonna set this aside and let it cool. In here, we have the start of our enchilada sauce. Um, you can see the onions and the jalapenos still in there, so those are gonna give some flavor to the sauce. And then we have our beans. I have not tasted one yet, but these look just about perfect. So, little effort and um, really delicious for a pound of dried beans. So our baked potatoes are done and you can tell when they're done when you just squeeze them. I usually just use a towel and then I squeeze like this and if they feel like they're tender, they're done. So when you're making twice baked potatoes, look at the shape of the potato and figure out which way it lies flat, okay? So like, for example, that's a bad example. <laughs> this potato, it's not gonna sit up well, <laughs> I'm not proving my point. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that there's usually a flat side, side and a more curved side. So you wanna make sure that you cut the potato in the way that you want it to like lay in the dish. So in this case, I'm gonna cut it this way so that my two halves can lay like that. And then this one, I'll probably cut this way. There, okay. So now I'm not gonna use a recipe for these particular twice baked potatoes, but I'll try to link one down below that um, is similar, but essentially you can flavor these however. And all you're gonna do is scoop out the flesh of the potato. And I like to leave a little bit in there just so it kind of gives the skin, the potato skin, some structure. Um, but honestly, I mean, I know potatoes are cheap, but like this is a good example of being able to stretch, you know, two potatoes um, for four people. And also twice baked potatoes um, will refrigerate and freeze really well also, so you can make them ahead of time. So I'm just gonna take all of the flesh out of these and then basically this is kind of how you want your shell to be left and then I'll put it um, in a bowl and then we'll add some sour cream and cheese to it. Okay, so here are my potatoes in the bowl here. I added a couple of tablespoons of butter. If you don't have butter on hand, just leave it out and add more salt. Salt fixes everything. So I'm gonna go ahead and salt this. I already peppered it. And then I just have a potato masher here and we're gonna mash this up now. In full disclosure, I only really purchased enough sour cream to make the casserole and the enchiladas. However, we're going to take a couple tablespoons of sour cream and put it in here. And I think it's going to be fine. We'll just have a little bit less sour cream in the other recipes. So the potato filling is done. Make sure that you give it a taste to make sure that it's properly seasoned. Add more salt or pepper if it needs it. And then I'm just going to start stuffing these. Potatoes are really, I feel like, one of nature's greatest gifts to us. Like honestly, you can do so many things with a potato and they're so cheap. And for so long, I, you know, when I had this like disordered eating slash thinking about carbs, I just, I don't know. I always felt guilty when I ate potatoes, but now I'm in a better place and I love them. A baked potato is also, you know, even just a plain baked potato topped with like sour cream, maybe some broccoli, cheese, butter. I mean, that's a meal in and of itself. I eat that. I eat that for a meal any day. We've got our four potatoes here. Now you can customize these in a myriad of different ways. You could add bacon, you could add cheese, you could put broccoli in there. I'm going to put some ham on them just because that's what I purchased, um, you know, with our groceries. 
let me grab a baking dish. I'm gonna place these in my baking dish. Now, most of the time when I make these, I do you know, throw all caution to the wind and put shredded cheese in the filling as well. But since we're trying to keep our costs down, I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit on the top and they're still gonna be super delicious. Okay, now ham. So this half pound ham steak we're actually gonna use for several different meals. So the bulk of it I'm gonna be using in my rice and beans but I also want some of it for um, the refried beans, which I, again, I know sounds odd, but we're just kind of using that like salty pork flavor. Um, and then I wanna use part of it in the potatoes as well. So I think I'm gonna do like, I don't know, two thirds maybe for the rice and beans. And then the rest will just dice up um, for the other purposes. Sometimes I feel like the smaller you chop things up, the more it looks like you have. <laughs> it's, probably, it's probably just like a trick of the eye, but it still helps in terms of like stretching ingredients. Okay, so I grabbed my cheddar cheese and a uh, good thing for me that my daughter Kira doesn't really like cheese on her potatoes because then I get to save money and leave it off of hers. <laughs> but basically I'm just going to take like maybe a tablespoon of cheese and put it on the top of here i mean that's just that's going to give it you know just enough flavor um to where it still tastes cheesy but you know it didn't didn't cost much to do it okay boom that looks pretty delicious and it didn't cost hardly any money at all okay so i have my oven set to 400 i'm gonna pop these in there for maybe like 10 15 minutes just kind of warm everything through and melt the cheese for this ham i'm gonna save this for the refried beans so i'm just gonna pop it into this little cup right here even if you're not making these budget meals this ham steak is like i said a really good value and you could use this chopped ham for so many things you could put it on salads you could put it in uh what you could put it in omelets eggs whatever you want okay so then this the rest of this is going to be for the um cajun style beans and rice so I'm gonna cut this up just a little bit larger and then put this in a separate container. All right, and then we'll pop these in the fridge for later. So we're gonna go ahead and saute our chicken breast to go on the side of the potatoes. So I'm just gonna heat this skillet over medium high heat with a little bit of olive oil. This is a stainless skillet, so it's gonna give us that good crust on the outside of the chicken. My pan is preheated, I'm gonna add my chicken. So the potatoes are done. Here's what they look like. Now I did put some chives on some of them because I have chives for free on my deck because they're perennial and they grow every year without me having to do anything with them. Um, but obviously you can leave those off. It's still gonna be just as good. And then here is the chicken breast. All right, so here's our first dinner. Twice baked potato with some chicken breast and I just have a little bit of barbecue sauce on the side. So this plate comes out to $1.25. Uh, well, all of these plates are going to come out to $1.25 actually, so definitely a really good thrifty deal. All right, so I wanted to show you guys the beans that I ended up getting out of that pound. So I ended up getting a little over three cups of beans in each container. So this is probably equivalent to four cans of, like four regular size cans of pinto beans, um, which would normally cost me over $2.00 at Walmart, but obviously half price if you cook your own. So one of these is going to go for refried beans and then the other one is going to go for the um, Cajun style beans. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do next is work on shredding my chicken and then I'm going to go ahead and put together the chicken broccoli rice casserole. Um, because that can just sit in the fridge until I'm ready to make it this week. So since this bag of broccoli from Walmart is steamable, I'm just going to pop this right in the microwave and cook it like that. All right, so I can already tell you guys that I definitely made an oops. <laughs> and that is that I don't think I bought enough rice for all of my dishes. I totally forgot that I needed rice for um, to go with the Cajun beans. So we're going to make it work. It's going to be fine. 
we're gonna use every little bit of this chicken. That's kind of why I threw those scraps in there so that I could pull um, the what's left of the meat off of it. But anyway, we're gonna make it work. It's gonna be fine. All in all, I think we're actually gonna have a more, well, I wanna say more food than we need. Um, I mean, it is tight. I, I was actually debating not calling this video an extreme budget. However, I do think feeding a family of four on $5, you know, total for one meal um, is an extreme budget. I mean, now if you're just doing beans and rice, rice and beans, cough, cough, Dave Ramsey, then fine. But if you're actually trying to like include animal protein and, you know, green veggies and stuff like that, it can be a little bit more difficult. This has been challenging. So I think probably what I'll end up doing is just use less rice than I was going to um, with the casserole and the lemon chicken because I am going to be serving peas with the lemon chicken as well and it should it should all work out. I mean beans are pretty I think you know beans are pretty filling anyway so it should be okay. All right. So all my chicken is shredded, you guys. I really, this is the only waste that I had from that huge pack of chicken. It's just like a little bit of fat here. So um, I'm gonna give this to Murphy. Okay, so here's how we're gonna divide the chicken up. So most of the chicken I have on this plate, that is what we're gonna use for um, the enchiladas. There's also gonna be cheese in the enchiladas. So we're gonna have to work to make this stretch for 10 to 12 tortillas, but I think we can do it. Um, and then this chicken here is gonna go into the broccoli rice casserole. Definitely in casseroles, you can get away with using less meat than you normally would because it's in small pieces and it's kind of distributed uh, throughout the casserole. Okay, so I've got my rice in here, my pre-cooked rice. Um, this is for the casserole, so I'm gonna open my broccoli, toss that in there, and then add the chicken, and then I'm gonna set this aside while we make the sauce. Okay, so for the recipe for this casserole, you need um, one can of cream of chicken soup. I actually prefer the Campbell's brand, but since uh, we're, we're doing this on a budget, we're definitely using the great value because it is half the price. Okay, and then you need one cup of sour cream. I'm gonna be using a little bit less than one cup, again, because I took a couple of tablespoons out for the um, potatoes and then the juice of one lemon so what I've done is already I've zested this lemon uh, because we want to make sure that we're gonna extract all of the flavor from that before we juice it and I will be using that lemon zest in the um, lemon chicken that I make later in the week I tried to choose the the juiciest lemons that I could so hopefully that works but um, definitely, if you can, don't skip the lemon juice in this recipe because it really does brighten up the flavor of the casserole. Okay, so this recipe does call for about a third a cup of milk. If you don't have milk and you're truly doing this um, on a super tight budget, then just use water. I mean, no one's gonna know in the, in the final dish. I have milk and so that's what I'm using. Um, but it's gonna be it's gonna be fine. Okay, and then mustard. This is something that I would recommend adding if you have it. I think most people probably keep mustard in their refrigerator. The recipe calls for Dijon mustard, which is what I'm using because I happen to have some of these packets. If you don't have Dijon mustard, use yellow mustard. If you don't have yellow mustard and you have mustard powder, um, like from the spice section use that as well. Okay, now I'm not gonna add any salt to this because I think it's probably gonna be salty enough with the cream of chicken soup and then also um, the cheese that we're gonna put in. So this is basically the sauce, I guess you could call it, for the casserole. So the next thing that we're gonna do is add all of our ingredients along with some cheese. Okay, and then I'm just gonna add about two cups of cheese. I'm not gonna measure. I'm gonna be a little bit shy because we're gonna put some on the top as well. 
Okay, and then just mix this up and we'll put it into a casserole dish. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the same casserole dish that I used to make the rice because why not? It's already, <laughs> it's already dirty and it just had rice in it. So I am gonna spray it. If you don't have cooking spray, just brush it with a little bit of vegetable oil. If you don't have that, just, I don't know, <laughs> just leave it out, but it does help it from sticking a little bit. This actually makes quite a bit of food. I mean, I think that, you know, I planned to have this with that garden salad on the side. Um, in hindsight, I think I could have left that out and purchased more rice for the other recipe. Um, but obviously to make it more of a complete meal, you know, a salad on the side is, is perfectly fine. And if you're a vegetarian and you wanna try this recipe, just leave the chicken out. It's just as good. You probably have to use cream of mushroom soup though instead of cream of chicken soup. I mean, honestly, this could probably serve six people if some of those were kids. Otherwise, you know, you have four portions of this. That's, that's quite a bit of food. Okay, so we're just gonna take a little bit of cheese and sprinkle it over the top. And then this is ready to go. So um, I'm not gonna bake this tonight because we're obviously not having it for dinner tonight. But when I do, I will show it to you. And it's really, really, really delicious. Okay, so for the enchiladas, what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of assemble them, but keep the sauce separate so that they don't get soggy. And then when it's time to bake them, we can just add the sauce and bake them. So I have the remainder of my shredded chicken here and I'm adding that to a bowl. And then I'm going to add about two cups of shredded cheese. So one cup of the pepper jack, and then about one cup of the cheddar. And then I'm just gonna toss this together. Now I will say that I feel like the cheese to chicken ratio is a bit higher than it would be if I were making the recipe uh, normally, just because of the you know budget constraints we have, but it's all gonna turn out fine. So back to the enchilada sauce. Um, this has now cooled the chicken broth and like pepper and onion mixture. So I have my one cup of sour cream remaining here. I'm gonna whisk that into the broth. And once it is combined totally, then I'm gonna turn the Instant Pot back on to saute. And we're gonna whisk in like a little bit of a cornstarch slurry and some of the cheese. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and sprinkle in, I don't know, about half a cup of cheese maybe and give this a whisk. And once this starts to come to a bubble, I just have some cornstarch, just about a tablespoon and a half of cornstarch mixed with a tiny bit of cold water. And we'll just put that in to thicken the sauce. Okay, so here is my sauce. I added the cornstarch and you can see that it thickened up a little bit. So I'm gonna let this cool. I will give it a taste and see if it needs salt and pepper or anything like that. Okay, and then I'm just rolling my enchiladas. So I have a nine by 13 dish here that I greased. And basically what I'm doing is I'm taking one tortilla and I'm using a quarter cup uh, measuring cup to make sure that I get an equal amount in each enchilada. And then I'm just taking them, rolling them up and adding them seam side down to the dish. All right, so enchiladas, here's the game plan. So we have all of our tortillas rolled up with the chicken and the cheese. So I did end up getting 11 out of this. I have an extra tortilla. If I would have not stuffed some of them so full, I probably <laughs> would have been able to get 12 out of them, but that's fine. If you make this recipe as written, written, <laughs> you're gonna have a lot more filling because the original recipe calls for like two pounds of chicken. And I probably, use like maybe a pound if that so enchiladas here here's the sauce i did taste it it needed a little bit of salt and pepper so i added that this is a really unique tasting sauce so i would definitely recommend trying this recipe thank you again to my sister for giving it to me um, and then here's the cheese so when we're ready to assemble 
We'll just pour the sauce over the enchiladas, add the cheese, and bake at 350 for about 30 minutes. All right, so tonight we are having the chicken enchiladas. So I have my sauce here, and I just took the foil off of these. So I'm not sure if I'm going to use all of this sauce. It's kind of a lot. Um... I don't know, I guess we'll try. We'll try that and then I'm gonna put the cheese on the top. Cheese on top, so these are gonna go in the oven um, 350 degrees for about 30 minutes until everything is heated through and the cheese is bubbly. Okay, so for the refried beans, I am going to, um, I have some oil in the Dutch oven here. I'm using canola oil, but you can use olive oil or butter. If you have bacon, bacon grease on hand, you can use that. Then you don't need to use the ham. But again, we're modifying to <laughs> fit our budget here. So I have probably about three to four tablespoons of oil in there. And I'm going to add this ham. Um, and then I have three cloves of the garlic that I purchased. So I'm going to put that into the pan and just kind of saute that a little bit before I put the beans in. Okay, so these are the beans that I pre-cooked, so I'm going to add those. I'm just going to go ahead and add the liquid too, because I'm going to cook these down while the um, enchiladas are in the oven. So basically then all you want to do is just simmer these over about medium heat and mash them. And as you simmer them, they will sort of cook down and get thicker. And then you can season them with salt, pepper. I usually put cumin in there. Um, you can put cayenne pepper if you want and coriander um, if you have it. If not, you can leave that out. Okay, so here are the refried beans that I finished. So I did end up using my immersion blender to blend these up a little bit um, just because they were a little bit chunky for my liking, but you don't necessarily have to do that. So I blended those, I added um, salt, pepper, some cumin and a little bit of extra garlic powder and they taste really good and then here are those chicken enchiladas i highly recommend that you try this recipe even if you're not doing the budget meals they are so so good so i'm gonna plate this up okay so here are the enchiladas so i made enough so that everyone can have three um, that will serve four and I'm assuming that will have leftover beans so if I have leftover refried beans I'm actually going to incorporate those into the Cajun beans so you'll see that but once again definitely recommend this recipe I'll have it linked down below uh, this looks delicious definitely delicious for a extreme budget meal all right so here is tonight's dinner I thought I'd share it with you guys how this turned out so this is the chicken broccoli and rice casserole after I baked it you can see that this makes a huge <laughs> pan so I think definitely this divided by four would feed four people and then on the side we're just gonna have that garden salad that I bought and I had some um, croutons and some dressing just that I had in the house so I'm gonna toss that with this and this is what we're gonna have for our five dollar dinner tonight pretty good okay so the next meal I'm gonna show you guys is some lemon chicken and this is something I um, ate when I was a kid. I can remember my mom making it, although back I feel like in the 90s, um, chicken in the grocery stores was very expensive, like more expensive than ground beef. So I felt like, I felt like when my mom made this when I was a kid, it was like a super huge treat um, to have it, which is funny that I'm now making it for a budget meal. But I decided to make it in this video because it really fit in with the other ingredients that I had. So I have my chicken breast here that I cut into strips. I season that with salt and pepper. I also have the lemon zest that I uh, reserved from that lemon we used for the casserole. I have some flour. That is not necessarily um, required. You can make this without the flour, but the sauce won't be as thick. I have a couple cloves of garlic, and I wanted to mention this little rubber tool that I've been using to peel my garlic. It works great. Um, I'll link this down below. I'm sure I got it on Amazon. And then I have my other lemon here. Before I sliced this up, I went ahead and grated it into my chicken broth. So this is just two cups of chicken broth that I made with some bouillon powder. So what I'm gonna do is mix the flour in this bag with the chicken and kind of shake it up so all of the chicken can get coated. And I'll probably add in some of this lemon zest too, just because we kind of want to make it as flavorful as possible. So if you've never used one of these little garlic rollers, which I hadn't before I purchased this one, it actually works really well to peel the garlic. Um, it's like, it's magical. <laughs> Not really, but you know what I mean. 
And then I just use my garlic press to um, crush the garlic into the skillet. So there you go, super easy. And then this is the garlic press I have. I purchased a new one not too long ago because the old one I had was like very, it was starting to get kind of yucky. I probably shouldn't put it in the dishwasher as often as I do, but I, I don't know, I can't help myself. Okay, so I've got a skillet here and you want to choose a skillet that you have a lid to. And I have a little bit of oil in the bottom of there. I did put a little bit of butter in just because I had it in the fridge. You don't necessarily have to do that. You can just use oil um, if that's what you have. But we're just gonna saute these chicken strips. You don't have to necessarily make sure that they're entirely cooked through while you're sauteing them because we are gonna simmer this in the sauce for a little bit. So hopefully I can fit all of these in here. Um, I basically calculated eight chicken strips. Some are smaller and some are larger, but I thought that would be enough for four people. And then we're gonna serve this with some of the rice. We're really gonna have to ration the rice in between this meal and the Cajun beans. So we'll see how that works. But for now, I'm just gonna brown this on the first side, uh, flip it over, and then I'll show you how to make the sauce. Okay, so after I flipped the chicken, I added the garlic. Now I'm just gonna place my lemons over the top of the chicken. And then we'll pour in the broth and then this is gonna simmer covered for about 20 minutes. Um, this is also a really great weeknight meal because it doesn't take very long, so keep that in mind. So about two cups of chicken broth. And then I'm just gonna simmer this over medium heat and I'll show you when it's done. So do you ever just like lift the lid of a pot and you're cooking something and it's like, oh yeah, I know that smell. It takes me back. <laughs> That's what I feel like every time I make this. So here's the lemon chicken. I did simmer this on probably low to medium low for about 20 minutes. You can see here that the sauce is still really liquidy. That's how I like it. I, I like to pour it over my rice. Um, if you wanted to thicken it, you can add some cornstarch. Definitely add salt and pepper to taste. Um, you can see how the um, flour breading kind of sticks to the chicken. Now, if this bothers you, like if you're like, oh, that's soggy, I'm not gonna eat it, then just leave the flour out of the recipe. I like it, that's how we always had it growing up, so it's fine for me. Um, and then I steamed up some peas. That bag of peas I got at Walmart just in the microwave, super easy. And then here is how I'm serving it. So I am rationing out the rice a little bit because I do have to make it stretch for the Cajun rice and beans also. So I have a little bit of rice down here and then two chicken strips with some lemon. I seasoned it with salt and pepper and I have my peas on the side. So that is tonight's $5 dinner, yum. Okay, so I'm gonna share with you guys now this recipe for Cajun-inspired beans and rice. Now obviously we are modifying this a little bit because we didn't have enough in our budget to buy the andouille or smoked beef sausage, so we're gonna use ham, but it's gonna be just as delicious. So I have my pan heating up here with just a couple tablespoons of olive oil. I'm gonna add our chopped onion that we had left over. If you have peppers, on hand, you can definitely add them to this as well. Um, and then I'm going to add my diced ham. And then I have four garlic cloves. I'm not gonna add those quite yet because I wanna make sure that they don't burn. But I'm just gonna saute this for a couple minutes until the onions are soft. Um, and then I'll show you the rest. Now we are gonna use some of these leftover refried beans from the other night because it's gonna help thicken our um, beans, but obviously if you didn't have any leftovers from that meal, you can just leave those out. Okay, so I have two cups of veggie broth here. I'm gonna add this. It still hasn't dissolved all the way. I need to rinse out that cup. Cooking with one hand is always, <laughs> it's always fun. Okay, so I'm gonna stir this up, and then I have um, the other half of my beans here, so Again, you could use about two cans of pinto beans if you're not 
um, following this particular budget meal plan. But I'm just gonna stir this up. I'm gonna add a little bit of my refried beans and then I'm gonna get my seasonings together. Okay, so in this little bowl, I have some paprika, some cayenne pepper, some Italian seasoning, and some salt and pepper. You can definitely adjust the cayenne to your liking. If you use spicy sausage, you definitely wanna cut back on that. So I'm just gonna stir this in, and now I will let this simmer until it thickens up. So sometimes when I make this, I do thicken it with a little bit of cornstarch, and sometimes I don't. It just depends on how it turns out. I probably won't have to thicken it with cornstarch today um, just because I put those refried beans in there, but we'll see how it goes. All right, here is my completed Cajun style beans and rice. OMG, so good. I tasted it and the flavor is like spot on. I love it when that happens. Definitely adjust this to your taste. You can add hot sauce if you want additional salt and pepper. Um, like I said, the spiciness of it is gonna depend on the meat that you use. So since I used ham, I did add about half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, but in the past when I've used andouille sausage, I cut back on that just so it's not as spicy. Um, but I'm gonna plate this up and I will show you how it looks. If you have a little bit of extra room in your budget, you can make some cornbread on the side. Um, but this is definitely a really like huge pan like hearty portions for four people. All right, so here's how I'm going to serve this up. I have one of these shallow bowls. I think I actually got these at Ikea like years and years ago, but they're great for meals like this. So I just put some of the beans in the bottom of the bowl. And then here's a tip if you want to like eat less rice or if you're <laughs> rationing out your rice like I am for this challenge, um, just pack like your rice into a half a cup measuring cup and flip it over on top rather than putting the rice under the beans it also helps not get the rice so soggy and then i garnished it with just a little bit of dried parsley uh, definitely recommend recipes like this especially if you're budget cooking because they're super hearty and filling i mean the carb the carb police aren't going to like a meal like this because it's full of carbs However, if you are eat, if you're truly eating on a budget, it, it matters not how many carbs you have because this is lots of good protein um, and it's gonna keep you full for a long time. So that is the final meal that I have to show you guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video and you got some ideas out of it. I wanna go back to my original list really quick and see if we used everything on it. So I used all of the chicken breast, sour cream, ham, pepper jack, flour tortillas, I guess I had one of those left, but we already kind of talked about that. Actually, that could have been eaten with the leftover refried beans too. Used all of the cheese salad. You definitely used all of the rice, all of the lemons, potatoes. We used all of the beans. Uh, garlic, we have this left. <laughs> about three cloves of garlic, onion, cream of chicken, broccoli, yeah, jalapeno. So yeah, we used everything on this list, like all of it every little bit of it up except I have a bonus three cloves of garlic. If you want to check out Abby, make sure that you go and give her some love on her video. I'll link it down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!